So this is a really good example of a deal like that return mail would really work. I mean, it's it's probate. Um, it's a good one to dig into. Let's see if he owns any other properties. No. Um, so what I'm going to do on this one. And so maybe we can go ahead and process this return mail. That'd be kind of cool. I got four return mail pieces here. Let's see. Most likely they haven't been called. Maybe they have been. Um, there's a good chance they may go straight to deep prospecting though, if that's the case. So we'll see. Um, let me search. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen really quick. All right. So we got my screen. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I have, uh, the, the mail here and then, and I can have the address, but that's the mailing address, right? So I'm not going to really worry about the mailing address. I'm just going to open it up. Uh, I'm going to look at the property address here. Uh, and I'm just going to do an address search, which allows me to just start typing and it's going to auto filter it as if it's on, uh, like on Google. So it's an 811. Um, and then I can go north. I think is what that is. 48th Avenue. That's it right there. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this real quick. So a few things. Okay. Let's, let's step back a second. Let's step back a second. I feel like this camera is aiming all over the place. Let me zoom in just a tad here. Okay. Maybe like that. Okay, let's step back a second and let's make sure we have our account set up to be able to process direct mail in the right way. Fair? Fair. Okay, so I've sent mail and I'm going to get return mail. What do I want to be able to do? This is already just saved here, so I don't have to really worry about, you know, seeing that later. So we can just click on that in a minute. First things first is I want to make sure I have a return mail tag. Okay, and I think I already do in this account. Looks like I do. I have one property that's labeled as return mail. So we already got a return mail tag. That's fine. Doesn't really matter when it was return mail. It just matters that we have return mail tag on it, okay? The next thing I want to do is I want to create a sequence, which I already have in place here, it looks like, where when the tag return mail is added, I want to add to the board. So let's just choose make changes here so we can show how to do this. So um, trigger would be when a property tag is added and the tag is return mail, I want to create a board. I want to create a new card in the return mail board, okay? And that, that step is process next step, okay? So I'm going to save changes on that. Um, and I'm going to go to SIF line. I'm just going to look at that board really quick. I haven't really delved too much in this board, but it says process next steps. Okay, so 115 uh, Coon Street uh, A is already in here. So I guess this was a return mail. I don't know if it was because of uh, it was actually return mail or if this was an example, but it's there nonetheless. Okay, so we have one return mail there. And so very quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and process my return mail. Does that mean I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to like call them and do everything else right now? Maybe not. Right. But you can see that skip trace is the next step. It could have already been tried to be skip traced. And so I would skip that step. Right. I might have to jump right to research family. It just really depends on why and when you sent to direct mail. So you're going to have to look at the record when you add a tag. So all I'm going to do is go to my records page. I'm going to research that 811 North Avenue. And then I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to enter into the record because it's easier that way, I think. I'm just going to turn uh, search return mail here. And you can see I actually sent this on week 49. I don't know what week we are right now, but week 49 is when I sent the mail. So what week is week 49 in 2023 so that was december uh wait no what that was 2022 for sure <laughs> what am i thinking uh but december still so i sent this in the, the uh, december and this this got returned mailed to me on uh 29 december so, um, or probably the first week of January, actually, is when it got to me here. So it's it's been sitting, right? It's been sitting. All right. Uh, right now on week 10. Okay. Um, so it's been sitting. So, you know, I haven't really done my job. All right. Sue me. Um, don't actually do that, please. Um, okay. So we're going to continue on. So we're going to mark that return mail. That should have went to our SIF line board. There it is. Fantastic. We're going to move to the next one. Okay. We're just processing return mail. This should just be something that your team does, um, you know, once or uh, once or twice a week, right? You process the return mail. There is gold in the return mail. 
this return mail, by the way, I'm pretty sure because I've only sent mail to skip trace in two locations and no phone numbers. So you know this return mail is some some gold, right? You know it is. It's got to be, right? I mean, who? What else would it be if it's not gold? If no one else is reaching them, right? If you didn't, if you can't skip trace and get numbers, right here, Black Cox Road. It's a weird name. It's just vacant land. Probate. Direct mail attempts added. Let's take a look at this address really quick. I just want to see here. Such a weird property address. Um, okay, McDavid's in BFE. I mean, it's it's out. It's basically almost in Bama. Um, but hey, I mean, this guy might want to buy it. You know, it looks like there might be a house on it. It's vacant, but I know we'd have to see. Um, for now, well, it doesn't really matter. We process it as return mail, right? We let the next person handle that. Um, <laughs> it's ominous, right? It's it's kind of funny. Okay, um, <laughs> feel like someone's trolling me. All right, um, let's see what this next one is. Kind of, kind of fun because it's like kind of like candy, right? Because what if one ends up being in like an area I really love? Okay, so let's do the next one. Um. Just gonna back back pedal this one three seven five. Oops. You notice that if I use this address parameter, I can literally just type three seven five M and it pops up. Like there's Meadow View. So this is actually a Texas deal. Um, Texas property. So we're gonna process this return mail. Boom. Um, all right, and we got one more here. Nine one three one C H E Pensacola. Single family. I got another probate here. We got this one on Google Maps. Ooh, this, this is actually a nice property right here, huh? Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice one right there. That'd be one we'd want, huh? That would be one that we would want. Um, let's check it out on Zillow really fast. Ain't been listed, but yeah, that's uh let's take a peek really quick. Uh let me grab the address again here. One thing I don't like about clicking that button is it doesn't input the address here on Zillow, which is kind of what's needed to see the area better. Um, let's say uh, houses, and then let's clear out our square footage here. See if anything sold in the last six months around there. Okay, yeah, pretty busy. Two two fifty right here in the last six months. We can see. see like, I know this was a remodel. This is definitely surely a rehab. You know, um, maybe. Kind of got new flooring and base. It looks like it would be a rehab. I bought it quick. Let's see. Let's look at the chat here. Or the not the chat, but the history. So 2022 for 250. Listed for sale. And only just sold for 250. Damn. No, this wasn't a uh I don't think this was a flip. Oh no, it was a flip. Look at that. In June, it sold for 70 grand. 70 grand in June uh, or May, January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, May. Um, and then it sold. It took a whole year to sell it at 250. That's still amazing. Dude, they crushed it with that deal. Look, they didn't even put new cabinets in. This is the same cabinets resurfaced, just painted. They didn't even buy a new dishwasher. Wow. They crushed it on this deal. They, it's not even the same flooring throughout the whole thing. That's tile flooring. That's laminate. That's tile, or at least it's different laminate, if it's anything. They didn't replace the water heater. They didn't replace the AC. They did the shower, the bathroom vanity. Like, damn, what, what is this? Like, what, is that, what does that tell me? What, what, does this make you want to buy the house more? Okay, 
right, let's get off of that that horse. Um, it's two fifty, right? So we know good ARV here. So this is a really good example of a deal like that return mail would really work. I mean, it's it's probate. Um, it's a good one to dig into. Let's see if he owns any other properties. No. Um, so what I'm going to do on this one is I'm actually going to um, notice what I did here is it's return mail. So let me just go back to SIF line here and show you guys. I'm all out of return mail to process. Okay. So we added five properties to return mail here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and let's dig into, let's dig into this one here because as I'm processing, if it's me processing direct mail or if it's anybody on my team, what I really want to be able to do is I really want to make sure that they're watching out for, for the stuff that's the best opportunity, right? And so this is a return mail here. It's a really good opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and move it over right away. Um, it's not a lost deal. How is it lost? Because he died? It only just started becoming a deal. This didn't, that one didn't sell. That was, that was a, that, this, this was a comp. That one I clicked on was a comp. This wasn't the deal that sold. This is just another, th this wasn't the deal I just looked at. This is a comp. So this tells me someone's flipping that area. I, I, I just can't, basically what I did is I, each of these properties that I added, I just looked to see what the, you know, what it looked like. Like, I'm not interested. I mean, this one in Texas, maybe, um, maybe we'd be interested in, I don't really know that area enough. McDavid, that's the middle of nowhere. I'm not going to spend a lot of time and energy trying to get a hold of that person right now. Um, this one in Pensacola, maybe, um, you know, we would look into that one a little bit more. But this one kind of just stood out to me for whatever reason. Um, and so we're going to dig into that one. And this this one on Coon Street um, is, might be a duplex, so it might be something I'd be interested in as well. Um, yeah, it's multifamily. So I definitely would want to kind of get a hold of this person, whoever that is, right? Uh, we focus on these and foreclosures only. Yeah, dude, it's it's amazing. Um, or do that. I don't know because I can't tell your name. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, on this one here. And I'm going to click on the owner's name. And I'm just going to reach. I'm going to try to reskip trace the owner again just in case. I don't know. I'm just going to you know make sure the tag is added. Maybe I'll pull a phone number of a relative. And if I do, fantastic, right? Um, so we'll see here. Let's uh, Let's go back to the property. Um, go back to the owner here, see if we pull anything. Doesn't look like we did. If I click on the activity log, I can kind of see if maybe something happened. I can also go to my activity here and I can look at skip trace and see if I came back. No, it, it refunded me the 12 cents. That's what that little icon means. So I didn't get any phone numbers from skip tracing and sift really quick. So that means that uh, we've officially entered into deep prospecting, right? Um, I didn't get any from me. So I'm going to move this over into research family members. All right. And so now um, I'm going to go ahead and grab his name. And the very first thing I'm going to do, and you guys have seen me do this a couple times on some addresses, I'm going to search him Pensacola obituary. Um, and we're going to see if we can't find them on here. September. Let's see when I added the list in. So let's go to um, let's go to the the uh, full activity log really quick on the record, and let's see when I added this record into my account. So I added it in December, probably because I was pulling a list from September on you know the probate list from that last quarter. Um, oh, Robin is a it's a female. Um, that would make sense. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm pulling the obituary. Um, and I'm just going to read through it. And what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for any relatives, right? I'm looking to see if it mentions any sort of relatives in here. So um, so, so we want to dig into those. And Thomas knows a good bit about these. Okay, so we're going to dig into those. So the first thing I'm going to do for that then is I'm going to try. She died in Tallahassee, so maybe she was from there. But I'm just going to search this last name um, in uh, Scambia County to see if I can't find any addresses that fit them. You know what? Let's search this address and see if it's actually that's the first thing we should have done here. Let's actually search this address and see if it um if it's already in heirs of or anything. Oh, okay, so wait, Rob, Roy, Christopher, wait. It's already in the kids' names, huh? Wasn't it? No. Christopher, yeah, wait. Hold it a second. Where's that obituary? Oh man, I don't know who it is, um, but it seems as though they're the new owners of the property. So I'm wondering, 
I wonder if they deeded it. Like, how did that happen so quickly? Where's my deeds at? So 2015. It's already the name there. Single family. I mean, they've had it since. I had it for a while. Is that only on the probate list that I had here? Yeah. Married man whose post office in Alabama hereafter has joint tenants. But that's weird because the grantor of the deed wasn't even, I don't know, something's fishy about uh, this probate record. Something's fishy about it. I, I feel like I would spend a lot of time digging into this right now. Um, and so I'm going to pause on this one for now because I, I think I, I'd want to skip. I would want to dig into um, this address on the deed. Uh, Roy, Christopher, uh, using True People Search independently. So the name of her husband was... And... Um, one of the sons, one of the children, is not one of the children. Um, so either they're together um, or uh, they're, there's two separate owners. But either way, the weird thing is that the grantor of the deed was a. Which is not. Any of the names that. Um, there's not any of the last names that are part of the family in the obituary. So I'm part of me is thinking that possibly this record, maybe she was living there with her son. Um, I'm not really sure how it's showing her as the, the owner is kind of what I'm getting at. It's kind of weird. Um, so the message board, when I upload probate data, I usually add PR and attorney information and there's none there. So it's like a pre-probate, but the deed happened in 2015. So they, these two have owned this property for a while. So something's just kind of weird there. And so I feel like maybe, I mean, you should still reach out to them. Like, they, like these people still might want to sell that house, um, you know, potentially, but I, I don't, I don't see it being super fruitful for us right now. So I don't want to dig and spend a bunch of time into it, but at least you guys know how to process and return mail. I'm going to keep dropping over there for research family. Um, and you would basically do this every time you send direct mail, stuff comes back, tag it, have the sequence to add it back into here. And then basically have a virtual assistant, you know, go through the process. I just did skip trace it. See if you get numbers. If you don't move with the research family and you just slowly try to work through a certain amount of time, right? Like you, maybe you only do like, three a day, you know, for the VA, like, and they research all the family members and call all the numbers, but you really are just trying to figure out like out of how many return mail can you end up reaching the owner after you, most of my return mail is from stuff that you've called that I've already exhausted phone numbers initially or whatever. So most of the return mail that comes in is going to be stuff that is automatically going to go to research family for me. Okay. But so we're going to stop there for now.